Why are Japanese and American boat engines so ridiculously expensive? I mean, they're not made of gold, right? From weekend fishermen to offshore pros, everyone's asking the same thing. Why does power on the water cost a small fortune? But here's the twist. These engines aren't just motors. They're high-tech survival machines built to battle salt, speed, and time. What if I told you the price isn't just about horsepower, but what it takes to keep that horsepower alive at sea? Let's get started. Building a marine engine isn't just tweaking a car engine for water use, it's a completely different engineering beast. These engines aren't meant to cruise highways, they're designed to brave salt, spray, and surging seas. They're life support systems on the water, and when you're miles offshore, failure isn't just inconvenient, it can be dangerous. Japanese manufacturers like Yamaha and Suzuki are legends in the marine world for one big reason – obsessive reliability. Their outboard engines are crafted in ultra-clean facilities, where even microscopic contaminants are unwelcome. Some high-performance models are hand-assembled by master-level technicians with decades of experience. It's craftsmanship with salt in its veins. Meanwhile, American powerhouses like Mercury Marine and the once iconic Ebinrude take an equally meticulous approach. Mercury's manufacturing plant in Fond du Lac, Wisconsin is a marvel of modern engineering, where raw aluminium becomes precision machined power plants through robotic casting, high speed milling, and laser guided quality control. But it's not just about how these engines are made, it's about why. Marine-grade metals, waterproof electronics, sealed fittings, and corrosion-proof coatings are all standard. Every design choice fights against the biggest enemy in boating – salt water. And here's the kicker. Marine engines have to be reliable in environments where there's no roadside assistance, so every component must work flawlessly every time. This level of precision takes time, specialized labor, and strict quality assurance. And all of that adds up fast. Because when you're designing for the sea, there's no room for shortcuts. Subscribe for more deep dives like this and comment your favorite engine brand. Marine engines aren't just machines, they're mechanical athletes performing under pressure. Built for brutality and balance, they operate in an environment that's as beautiful as it is unforgiving. Salt water, extreme temperatures, erratic currents. It's a daily obstacle course where failure simply isn't an option. Unlike cars that glide over smooth pavement, marine engines must produce consistent thrust while battling resistance from wind, water, and waves. That means balancing power, stability, and endurance in a system that's constantly shifting. Modern outboards and inboards are marvels of engineering. Inside, you'll find electronic fuel injection systems fine-tuning fuel delivery, computer-controlled ignition timing optimizing every spark, and variable camshaft timing adjusting performance in real time. Add hydraulic tilt and trim, digital throttle and shift DTS and onboard diagnostics, and you've basically got a high-tech cockpit hiding under that sleek cowling. Some even feature GPS-integrated control systems that sync with your boat's autopilot and fish finder. These aren't engines anymore, they're command centers for your entire vessel. Designing an engine that can maintain power output while minimizing vibration, preventing overheating, and resisting corrosion takes an extraordinary level of engineering skill. Every part has to work in harmony, or the whole system suffers. And unlike road engines, marine power plants must cool themselves without the luxury of a radiator. Instead, they rely on seawater, meaning every cooling passage must be corrosion-proof and perfectly engineered. This level of complexity doesn't just look impressive, it adds significant cost. Because when you're designing a machine to fight the ocean, simple just won't cut it. From a distance, marine engines might look simple, just a sleek casing bolted to the back of a boat. But lift that cowling and you'll find a cutting-edge blend of race-bred technology, military-grade durability, and digital finesse that would make a spacecraft blush. Much of the tech packed into today's marine engines was born in high-stakes environments. Offshore racing, naval research, and even commercial shipping have all shaped the modern outboard and inboard. The innovations don't just look cool, they're designed for survival and performance in the harshest waters on Earth. Japanese leaders like Yamaha and Honda have set the bar with features like multi-stage fuel injection for precision efficiency, smart monitoring systems that deliver real-time diagnostics, and anti-corrosion tech that prolongs engine life far beyond typical expectations. 
On the American side, Mercury Marine is a tech titan. Their digital throttle and shift DTS system eliminates cables for lightning-fast control. Joystick piloting lets you parallel park your boat like a Tesla, and their V12 Verado. It features a steerable gear case and a two-speed transmission, making it the first of its kind in the outboard world. Why all this high-tech wizardry? Because modern boaters want more than brute force. They want smarter engines that are fuel-efficient, low-maintenance, and seamlessly integrated into their boating lifestyle. But innovation doesn't come cheap. All this engineering takes years of development, countless prototypes, and rugged real-world testing. So yes, part of what you're paying for is the tech. The other part? Knowing it'll work when you need it most. If you think a marine engine is just a car engine in a wetsuit, think again. The materials used in boat engines are in a league of their own. Designed not just to perform, but to survive a full-time job in the harshest environment short of outer space. Salt water, UV rays, high humidity, and constant motion are brutal. One crack in a seal or one rusty bolt, and you're dealing with damage that makes your wallet weep. That's why marine engines, especially from Japan and the US, are constructed using only the toughest, corrosion-resistant materials on the market. You'll find anodized aluminium blocks that resist pitting, stainless steel fasteners that shrug off rust, and high-strength composite housings that don't crack under pressure. Even the pistons, crankshafts, and cooling jackets are often made from specially treated alloys or coated to fend off salt-induced decay. Yamaha, for example, uses plasma-fused cylinder walls a high-tech feature that reduces weight while increasing strength and wear resistance. Mercury Marine, on the other hand, applies proprietary corrosion-resistant coatings and subjects its engines to salt spray tests that simulate years of saltwater exposure in a matter of weeks. These materials aren't just expensive, they're getting harder to source thanks to global demand for metals like aluminium, nickel, and copper. So yes, when you're paying top dollar for that outboard or inboard engine, a big chunk of that price is literally in the metal. Your engine isn't just a machine. It's a battle-hardened veteran built for war against the sea. Building a marine engine doesn't just take skill. It takes a global scavenger hunt for specialized parts and rare materials. Unfortunately, marine-grade components aren't exactly growing in your backyard. High-performance outboards and inboards rely on marine-grade aluminium, corrosion-resistant copper wiring, rare earth magnets, lithium for hybrid models, and synthetic resins tough enough to withstand salt, heat, and high RPMs. But these materials don't come from one place. They come from everywhere. Japan and the US source from countries like Chile, China, South Africa, and Australia depending on availability, cost, and geopolitical alignment. But here's the issue. The logistics are anything but smooth sailing. These raw materials and components often make multiple stops, moving from mines to refineries to processors to shipping yards, all before arriving at a marine engine plant. They're stored in climate-controlled facilities to prevent corrosion, subjected to rigorous inspection to meet marine-grade standards, and often delayed by supply chain disruptions, port congestion, or fluctuating international trade policies. Throw in import duties, fuel surcharges, and packaging designed to prevent even a single scratch or spot of moisture, and suddenly your pistons are well more traveled than most people's passports. Also, marine engines can't tolerate the kind of material shortcuts automotive manufacturing sometimes allows. Every wire, gasket, and bolt must meet much higher environmental durability standards. That means more expense, more care, and more time. By the time a single part hits the assembly line, it's already absorbed a world of cost. And that cost, it washes up in the final price. If you think car engines have it tough, marine engines would like a word. These machines face a daily gauntlet of saltwater corrosion. Wild temperature swings, high humidity air, relentless RPMs, and waves that slap harder than reality. And yet they're expected to run flawlessly, often for hours at a time without breaking a sweat. That's why boat engines don't just go through testing, they get full-on marine-grade hazing. Japanese and American manufacturers subject their engines to thousands of hours of punishing endurance tests. These include submersion in saltwater tanks, exposure to corrosive salt fog, extended UV light bombardment, and vibration platforms that simulate years of hull-pounding abuse. Yamaha is particularly notorious for over-engineering. Their engines are run harder, hotter, and longer in testing than they'll ever be in real life. 
All to ensure that even if you push the motor to its limits, it'll still get you home. Mercury Marine follows a similar philosophy, especially with commercial use lines like the Sea Pro and performance models like the Verado. These engines are tested under extreme conditions. Think offshore rig duty, rescue boats, and tournament-level fishing workloads. This level of torture requires massive investment, test chambers, highly specialized technicians, and constant recalibration. None of it is cheap, but the alternative? A stranded boater in open water. Reliability at sea is non-negotiable. It's not just about peace of mind, it's about survival, and the intense testing that guarantees it. That cost is built right into the engine's price tag. Got a marine engine story? Drop it in the comments and subscribe for more boat tech insights coming up. Marine engine R&D isn't about making something that simply works. It's about crafting a machine that can thrive in one of the most brutal environments known to man the ocean. Salt water, shifting temperatures, unpredictable weather, and long-term exposure to the elements make this the Everest of engineering challenges. Japanese companies like Honda and Yamaha don't just test their engines, they obsess over them. Their engineers constantly refine combustion chamber geometry, anti-corrosion coatings, fuel atomization techniques, and smart diagnostics. The goal? Build engines that are compact enough for tight transoms, powerful enough for strong currents and efficient enough to sip fuel, not guzzle it. All while staying smooth, quiet, and reliable for thousands of sea-soaked hours. On the American side, Mercury Marine leads a similar charge. Their R&D labs don't just design, they simulate. Every new outboard or inboard concept is subjected to intense virtual modeling real-world prototyping, and on-water stress testing. Mercury's digital controls, joystick piloting, and fuel mapping systems didn't appear overnight. They're the product of years of iterative design and feedback from serious boaters and commercial operators. R&D isn't cheap. It requires entire teams of engineers, miles of test data, custom software, proprietary metals, and increasingly AI-driven predictive systems. Some projects never even make it past testing, but the resources spent still show up in your engine's price. Because when you're building for the sea, mediocrity isn't an option. You're not paying for what works, you're paying for what lasts. Designing a marine engine is like cramming a jet engine into a cooler and expecting it to thrive in salt water. Japanese brands like Yamaha master compact ergonomic designs that balance weight, reduce drag, and resist corrosion. Their outboards are light, efficient, and easy to service, ideal for tight hull spaces. American engines like Mercury's V12 Verado emphasize power, torque, and modular build. With features like steerable gear cases and smart maintenance access, they're built for control and serviceability. But marine engine design also considers aesthetics and integration. Joystick piloting, auto trim, digital throttle systems. All this demands intense prototyping, testing, and emissions compliance. Design isn't just about lux or power, it's precision under pressure. And that level of refinement doesn't come cheap. They're not just selling horsepower, they're selling the dream of the open sea. Japanese brands like Yamaha and Suzuki focus heavily on reliability, smooth operation, and long-term fuel efficiency. Their messaging emphasizes peace of mind. The idea that your engine won't let you down, no matter where the tides take you. Think calm waters, smiling families, and quiet sunrise fishing trips. American brands like Mercury Marine aim for adrenaline. Their marketing revolves around power, innovation, and pushing limits. Slogans like Go Boldly are backed by footage of high-speed chases across coastal waters, sleek boats carving through surf, and cutting-edge joystick piloting systems making docking look effortless. Behind these campaigns are multi-million dollar budgets. Shooting a single product commercial often involves renting exotic locations, drone fleets, full production crews, and even stunt drivers on water. Add in sponsorships for fishing tournaments, pro captains, demo boats at boat shows, and influencer collaborations, and it becomes clear. Marine engine marketing is serious business. Then there's the behind-the-scenes cost, training programs for dealers, high-end branding materials, virtual engine simulators, and even branded swag, all designed to make the customer experience feel premium from start to finish. Marketing builds trust, excitement, and brand loyalty, but it also builds cost. 
That sleek lifestyle image, it's part of the price you pay when you hit buy. Once a marine engine rolls off the production line, its journey is just beginning. Before it ever touches water, it has to cross a maze of global logistics, one that adds serious cost long before the motor is mounted on your transom. For Japanese manufacturers like Yamaha and Suzuki, engines are typically exported in tightly controlled shipments, from precision plants in Japan to dealers and distributors around the world. Every outboard is securely created, sealed against moisture, and loaded with care to survive long voyages across oceans and continents. American engines, like those from Mercury Marine, follow a similar path. Whether headed to a Florida marine or a dealership in Dubai, these engines require special handling, protective packaging, and tracking through every stage of transit. But exporting isn't just about shipping containers and forklifts. There are customs duties, marine insurance premiums, port fees, inspection protocols, and the occasional holdup due to changing trade laws or global supply chain hiccups. Add to that warehouse storage, often in climate-controlled environments, plus domestic freight costs once the engine lands, and you've got a pricey paper trail before the key ever turns in the ignition. And the bigger the engine, the more complex and expensive the shipping. A V12 outboard doesn't just get delivered, it's moved with the kind of care reserved for race cars and art pieces. By the time your engine is prepped and ready for install, it's already survived a global voyage and picked up a freight bill worthy of its horsepower. Behind every marine engine is a team of skilled professionals whose precision, expertise, and craftsmanship transform raw materials into seaworthy power plants. These engines aren't mass-produced toys. They're built by specialists designed to engineer machines that can survive the punishing demands of salt, pressure, and time. In Japan, manufacturers like Yamaha and Suzuki value craftsmanship at a near-spiritual level. Technicians often spend years mastering their roles, some even becoming elite engine builders trusted with assembling performance units by hand. They don't just assemble, they inspect every part with microscopic focus ensuring the kind of reliability boaters trust in the middle of nowhere. In the US, Mercury Marine operates massive manufacturing facilities powered by union-backed labor, seasoned machinists, and engineers who know marine performance inside and out. From CNC operators and test rig specialists to engine calibration experts and electronic systems integrators, the workforce behind an American marine engine is just as specialized. And it's not just the builders. There are quality assurance teams, R&D engineers, logistics coordinators, customer service staff, and trainers, all contributing to the engine's life cycle before it even hits the water. Fair wages, health benefits, workplace safety, and skilled labor retention all factor into the cost. But they're also part of the reason marine engines can run for thousands of hours without a hiccup. So when you see that final price tag, remember it's not just metal and fuel efficiency. It's decades of hands-on expertise, packed into every piston and propeller. Japanese boat engines like Yamaha and Honda are praised for reliability, efficiency, and long-term durability. Built with surgical precision and corrosion-resistant materials, they're ideal for boaters who value quiet performance and minimal maintenance over time. American engines like Mercury Marine's lineup focus on raw power and advanced tech, joystick steering, digital controls, and higher torque for bigger boats. They're perfect for those who want innovation and muscle in one package. Both are expensive, but for different reasons. Japanese brands invest in refined, lasting performance. American brands lean into innovation and power. Whichever you choose, you're not just buying horsepower. You're buying peace of mind at sea, backed by decades of engineering designed to battle the harshest marine conditions. Enjoyed the breakdown? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. We read every one.